Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ, here to teach the truth. Who's the black man that went into slavery? Who's the black man scattered throughout the sub-Saharan slave trade, transatlantic slave trade, the diaspora, as the world calls it? We are the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Who is Christ? The black Messiah, according to Revelation chapter 1, verse 14 and 15. All these things we're going to prove to you. Your churches don't want to talk about it, but guess what? We're going to talk about it. So join us every Monday at 8 p.m. Germany time. Shalom. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome to No More Lies. It's your boy Isaac Jr. right here in, from Top Africa Studios, Hamburg, Germany. And with us on the show is um, Deacon Yawasop and Officer Noah. Deacon and Officer, how y'all both doing? We're doing fine. We're, we're doing doing fine. Uh, we're happy to be here. Glad to be able to be in communication with our brothers and sisters around the world, mm. and in Hamburg, Germany, as mm. well as all throughout the uh, Facebook audience. Wonderful, officer. It's a pleasure to see you here for the first time. How you feeling? I'm I'm doing well today, sir. It's an honor to be on the show. Um, so hopefully, we'll have a good, edifying show for our people out there. Wonderful wonderful that is correct we will definitely have an edifying show for the people so while we build up viewers um before everyone comes in our topic for today is is christmas a christian tradition this is what we want to discuss on this is pretty much a part two of um last week's episode <clears throat> a lot of us uh have um different um perceptions on what christmas is because it's so much and so forth you know this whole entertaining phase of the year where everyone gets together there are a lot of holidays that people can have all on people can take so it's uh, it's pretty much that fun time you know families get together a lot of cooking around parties fest festives you know so we are going to talk more on christmas now bishop do you think well, christmas is a deacon i'm the deacon uh bishop my bad Nathaniel is my bad, no my bad, Dicky. I was I forgot that. You. I just got yeah, yeah. That's good. Thank you for correcting me. I just got a little used to the bishop t title right there. I am. Um, yeah, Deacon. Uh, what do you think about Christmas being a um, a Christmas tradition? Well, what do I think about Christmas being a Christian? A Christian tradition. Yes. Do you think tradition. it is? It is a Christian tradition. Is it a tradition? People in churches or people, believers, followers of the Bible, the gospel, should practice or take part in. Uh, well, a lot of times when these subjects come up, qualification of terms need to come forward. Mm. When we ask the question about it being a Christian religion, mm. I mean a Christ, what is tradition. It, Christian tradition. tradition we need to identify what Christian mean, mm. who are the Christians, and then is this particular holiday, is it something that God ordained? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When we talk about Christians, what does that mean? And what is God's connection to the Christians? Mm. And mm. if his connection to the Christians is X, Y, and Z, does the uh, tradition of Christmas fit within that? Mm -hmm. You with me so far? Yes. So, where did the term Christian come from? Mm -hmm. Let's get that. The book Let's of get uh, Acts, chapter 11, verse 26. Mm -hmm. Let's read, let's, let's establish that first. Okay. This is the book of Acts, chapter 11, and verse 26. Mm -hmm. All right, so we were reading the book of Acts, chapter 11, and verse 26. And we had found him. He brought him unto Antioch, and it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people, and the disciples were called Christians. Stop. For, stop. Right there. And the who? And the disciples were called Christians mm -hmm. first in Antioch. So the term Christians were applied to the disciples, were applied to the apostles. Why? Because they were the anointed they were the anointed uh, people of God. Christian, Christ, or what people call Christ-like, Christian-like, meaning that they were, followed, they were followers of Christ. So they were called Christians. 
Who are these Christians? The disciples, the apostles. So that's where the term Christian comes from. So now that we understand that what the Bible meant by the term Christian, it was talking about the Israelites that mm. followed Christ. Disciples it was not talking about other nations. It was talking about the Israelites okay. that followed Christ. These were the people that the, that the nations or the Romans labeled uh, Christians. Mm. Okay, so that's uh -huh. whenever we hear the term Christian in its in its true form, it means the Israelites that follow Christ. Just the Israelites that follow Christ. Yes, yes, that's what it really meant. That's what mm. it was really talking about. Then, then a religion was made out of it, but mm. that's not what God is talking about. God mm. is not his, his connection is not with the other quote unquote other nations that okay. quote unquote follow. Him. Okay. I'm gonna tell you. Look, let me read one scripture that confirms that. Yeah, one go ahead. Give me um, Matthew's 24 and um, I think 8 or 9. Matthew 24, 8 or 9. About delivering you up? Yes, yes. I think it's the verse before that. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Yes, sir. Give me a second. Um... Just go right, to, yeah, go to uh, 10. All right, this is the book of Matthew, chapter 24, and verse 10. And then shall many be offended and shall betray. Well, you're right, you know what, start with 9. I'm sorry, I should have did that. Yes, sir, verse 9. Matthew, chapter 24, and verse 9. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. The ye are talking about the disciples mm -hmm. okay that's what the first verse is talking about it says and jesus went out and departed from the temple and his disciples came to him to show to show him the building of the temple and christ began to tell them about the last days so christ was speaking to the disciples he was speaking to the apostles the same groups of people that we just read about in acts read verse 10 and then shall many be offended. When I say the same groups, I'm talking about from the lineage of the apostleship, so you can understand. Mm -hmm, of mm -hmm. course, Acts, the time period in Acts is different from the time when Matthew was in Christ. But I'm making the point that these were bloodline descendants from these 12 apostles here. Okay. Read. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another. And shall betray one another. Go ahead. And shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise. No, and jump to verse 9. I, I only read the first verse so that we can identify who yes, we are talking to. Verse 9. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. This is what Christ is telling them. Then shall you be delivered up to be afflicted. Because that's what happened with the disciples. Not, they were killed, crucified upside down, all that. Go ahead. And shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all nations. Ye shall be hated of all nations. See that? So the disciples are not loved. The real disciples of God, the real disciples of Jesus are not loved in this society. Mm -hmm. Okay? So what, they, what people are associating with, with uh, Christianity is not what the Bible is talking about at all, as we're going to prove as this as this program continues so the disciples were not liked people mm -hmm. the people of god the prophets never were liked by the nations were never liked by the people why because god sends the god jesus sends the prophets to change people's behavior to conform to what he wants and people don't want that people want to do their own things they want to follow what the the because the customs of the nations. So anytime they hear some direction or some order that's telling people how to change or to discipline themselves into the doctrine, if you will, the doctrine of the Most High, there's some backlash to it. There's some hatred to it. You follow me? There's some blackout on it, like today. Read that again, 9 and 10. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 9. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. So ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. So the, the people who are not going to truly love the, the, the uh, gospel of the Christians, of the real Christians. They love Christianity, but they don't love the real gospel of the Christians, mm. if you know what I mean. Mm, 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 mm. Okay. I think that 
that's yeah, just that, a that's, answer, no? that that does that does summarize a lot. That does summarize a lot. Um, in that case, Deacon, where, where where does Christmas come from? Where's where does it originate from? There's a lot of history on that. Um, in particular, because that particular topic can span the whole two hours. That is what true. I suggest, so that we don't uh, tie up the lesson. Mm. We have videos up, and I'll mm. just say this and not give a brief explanation, mm. Mm. but we have a video up on IUIC in the classroom entitled The History of Christmas. Mm. The History of Christmas. And it is very enlightening, it is uh, very informative. Okay. It gives clear uh, uh, knowledge of how it, it flourished in this country mm -hmm. and the origins of it. Mm -hmm. in terms of how it is used today. Now, did the Bible speak about this wicked, what well, I'm going to call it wicked, right? Because mm. I know a lot of people say it's not wicked. Okay. Does the Bible give indication to this holiday that has come to evaporate the minds of our people? Mm. Okay. Uh, the book of Jeremiah chapter 10. Mm. This is, gives some origin uh, to this Christmas holiday, this so-called Christmas holiday, but it's not, it was not called Christmas. Okay. Okay. Read that. Yes. Are this, you, are you want to ask something else before I read this? Isaac? No, 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 it's fine. Um, I just want to, uh, state that, uh, we are going to have a guest on the show as well, a pastor. Um, he will be uh, discussing with us also these topics. So, um, we're going to go on, uh, bef after you read your verse, we're going to take a real short break. And when we come back, the pastor is going to be with us on the segment because he just arrived in the studios right now. So, um, you might as well go ahead and read the, the, the scripture officer, and then we will, oh, uh, oh. take it up from there. Well, I'm going to do one better. I'll save that one, but give me Deuteronomy. Let's read about mm. the Israelites. Deacon. I like your spirit, yeah. Deacon. All right. Give me, um... Leviticus 23. Let's read that. Leviticus 23 and 1. Because we have to identify mm. who are supposed to keep what holidays. Right. Leviticus 25 and 1. This is the book of Leviticus. Leviticus 23, I'm sorry. Leviticus chapter 23 and 1. Chapter 23 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel. See, this is the first thing we have to do. We have to identify who the Bible is talking about. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, rather be in church or various religions, all religions have some kind of connectivity to the Bible. Mm. They have some kind of tangency to the Bible. In other words, their religion makes some reference on some scale, somewhere, mm -hmm. some uh, religious connection to the Bible. Rather it be Islam, rather it be um, what are some of these other religions they have out here? Um, Hinduism, yeah. Buddhism, Islam, Christian, Hindu, Christianity. They all get some. They all have some kind of connection, or they, or they draw some tenet from the Bible and incorporate it into their religion. But when they do that, all of the religions, including Christianity, leave out who the Bible was actually written for, mm. and it is written for the Israelites. So we must identify who are the. Uh, the natural uh, recipients mm. or the intended recipients of this Bible. Let's read mm. again. Uh, Leviticus 23. That's what we're going to show now. Yes. The book of Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them concerning the feast of the Lord which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations. Mm hmm even these are my feasts. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest and holy convocation. You shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. So this was a law that was given by it was given to Moses to give to the children of Israel. So this chapter covers the majority of the high holy days or the holidays, if you will the holidays of what Israel is supposed to keep. And it's making the point of who's supposed to keep it. We as the Israelites don't know that we are the Israelites. So we'll be reading it in a quote unquote Christian mentality, not realizing that the Bible is literally speaking about us. We'll be reading it from a point of view like, oh, we are included in whatever that Bible is. 
not realizing that they are, in fact, the subjects of the Bible. That is a great so point. That is, go that ahead, is Isaac. A, I'm sorry. It's all right. No, it's all right. Too much, no, so no, no. Deacon, Deacon, it's all right. You're in the spirit <laughs> right there. So it's all good, you know. That is a great point. But on that note, we're going to go to a short break right now. And uh, when we're back, we're going to have the pastor on set with us. So uh, stay tuned while we enter this show. Daniel of Israel united in Christ, here to teach the truth. Who's the black man that went into slavery? Who's the black man scattered throughout the sub-Saharan slave trade, transatlantic slave trade, the diaspora, as the world calls it? We are the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Who is Christ? The black Messiah. According to Revelation chapter 1, verse 14 and 15, all these things we're going to prove to you. Your churches don't want to talk about it, but guess what? We're going to talk about it. So join us every Monday at 8 p.m. Germany time. Shalom. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ, here to teach the truth. Who's the black man that went into slavery? Who's the black man scattered throughout the sub-Saharan slave trade, transatlantic slave trade, the diaspora, as the world calls it? We are the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Who is Christ? The black Messiah. According to Revelation chapter 1, verse 14 and 15, all these things we're going to prove to you. Your churches don't want to talk about it, but guess what? We're going to talk about it. So join us every Monday at 8 p.m. Germany time. Shalom. Ladies and gentlemen, here we are back on No More Lies. With me in the studio right now is Pastor Cosmos Darko. How are you doing, sir? Thank you. I'm doing so well. Just uh, speak closer to the mic. I'm doing so well and I'm happy to be here. It's wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. Um, Deacon, can you hear Pastor uh, Cosmos? Yes, I can. He's a little uh, low, but uh, I can hear him. Uh, okay. Good to see you, Pastor. Glad that you were able to come aboard. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I'm also happy to see you today. I've been watching your program. And it's a privilege for me to be here today. Great. So um, the topic of today's show is, uh, is Christmas a Christian tradition? This is pretty much what uh, today's segment is going to be tackled on. It's actually the part two of an early episode we had last week. Now, um, at this point, before we went into the break, we were talking about um, uh, where does Christmas origin from where is christmas from what, what how did christmas come about so what would you have to say about that okay the the origin of of christmas uh christmas is celebrated to commemorate the birth of jesus christ mm -hmm. of course uh the bible doesn't state specifically when jesus was born mm -hmm. uh it, it's, it's been a dispute in church history for quite some time until 336 AD when Christmas was first celebrated on the 25th of December by mm -hmm. the Christian Emperor mm -hmm. Con Constantine mm -hmm. and then it was later uh, made composed by uh, uh, a Pope that, that was Pope Julius the first and from that time uh, Christmas has been celebrated mm -hmm. on the 25th of December uh, as, I, as, I, as I made that statement earlier there is no record that Jesus Christ was was born on the twenty fifth of December. Most of most of the of the reasons given in church history is based on uh, assumptions, uh -huh. and then also based on um, uh, uh, either the, the Jewish calendar or the Gregorian calendar and all that. And and there are, there are also some there are also reasons why uh, we celebrate Christmas on the twenty fifth of uh, of December. One of them is, as I told you, uh -huh. you know, uh, Christianity be became the major religion of the of the Roman Empire when Constantine uh, believing that um, uh, God has given him victory. You know, during his war, uh -huh. he, he he believed that he saw the cross, uh -huh. the sign of the cross in the sky. Okay, and he believed that because of that, he got a victory. And then after the war, after he had a victory, he he made sure that Christianity. Uh, became the religion of the state of the Roman Empire. Uh. So, so the Roman Empire from the time of Constantine has really affected Christianity. You know, uh, uh, they made some changes here and there to affect Christianity, especially the ce celebration of Christmas. Uh. Uh, as I told you, it, it, it was first re recorded first in three three six eighty. Uh -huh. Now, 
some of the reasons why we celebrate uh, uh, we celebrate Christmas on uh, on the 25th of December is also the fact that some church history historians at the early part of church history believe that there is something we call Annunciation. The Annunciation is when they believe that that, that was when the angel Gabriel appeared to uh, Mary uh -huh. and and gave her the good news that she was going to, uh, she was going to give birth to the Messiah. And they calculated the day to be on the 25th of March. Uh, okay. On, of March. Of, of March. The 25th okay. of March. So when you calculate nine months from 25th of March, it's, it, it falls on uh, 25th of December. Uh -huh. Okay. So some, some believe that, okay, then uh, that, that should be the, 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 the actual date. Of the delivery. actual date. Mm. Another instance also, the one of the reasons why it falls on, on this day was also, uh, you know, on the 25th of December, the Roman... Uh, the Roman Empire uh -huh. used to celebrate um, uh, the, the Sun God. Uh -huh. they, they used to call it Saturnalia. Okay. Yeah, they, they used to celebrate celebrate the Sun God. Uh -huh. The celebration actually started from on the twenty first of December to twenty third, and it was finally commemorated on the twenty fifth. The reason why they chose the twenty fifth was that um, you see that, that is the shortest period between sunrise and sunset. Okay, uh -huh. and then and then uh, they, they believe that uh, the, the Sun God. Was sort of uh, 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 imposing uh -huh. its superiority on darkness. Okay, so because of that, uh, th that celebration, it was it was a general celebration. It was a very popular celebration, and most people believe. Most people believe. Okay, uh, they said Jesus is the light of the world, and and uh, uh, they chose that. But generally, it has been accepted. But I believe when you when you study the Bible carefully, I don't believe Jesus was born on on on. Uh, 25th okay. of December. Uh -huh. Yeah, so I think I can end here and maybe we can follow up with okay. other questions as well. Okay, okay. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Deacon. Yes, I'd like to respond to that. Um, I, I want to take his last point first. He says that generally um, they don't believe that he was born on December 25th. Did I hear you correct, Pastor? Uh, I said personally. I, I, I personally, said personally, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, I, I said generally, personally, we need that, you uh, Jesus was born on 25th of December because all these are speculations. There is nowhere in the Bible that the Bible states categorically that Jesus was born. We don't know the date. And, and, and when you study the different calendars or that, has, that has come into history, there, has, there are some uh, discrepancies, okay, in the dates, actually. There are some discrepancies. So I personally, I don't believe Jesus was born on the 25th of December. Uh, based okay. on even the Jewish calendar and, and all those things. Yeah. Oh, all right. All right. Deacon? Do, mm -hmm. Now, you, you are a pastor, correct? Yes, I am a pastor. Come December 25th, around the Christmas holiday, do you, as a leader of the church, do you encourage or do you lead the congregants into the celebration of what you would call Jesus' birth? Uh, yeah, thank you so much uh, for your question. Uh, I, I will gladly do that for quite some reasons. First of all, the man we are talking about, Jesus Christ, when you study his life carefully in the Bible, you find out that he was not a man that was very particular about deeds and all that. He was a man of purpose. If you look at the way he preached, he was concerned about the kingdom of God. And when you read the I gospel, understand that. Uh, uh, when, when you read the gospel, you find out that uh, even Jesus broke the Sabbath. The, the, there were some things that the people were not supposed to do on the Sabbath, but Jesus broke the Sabbath, and Jesus said, the Sabbath was not made for man, uh, uh, but man was made for the Sabbath. Okay, you understand? So he was not a man specifically giving to celebrations and all what that. But he said that, but, but, I'm, I'm but sorry. Let, let, me, let me say this, let me say this. Um, you know, in the Bible, there are only two okay, occasions Jesus gave us the church to celebrate. His death, that is in the communion and also in water baptism. These are the only, let me say, church rituals in, in code that Jesus gave to the church to be celebrated. Celebrating his birth is not a commandment that he gave to the church. But we believe in uh, uh, Epiphany. We believe in that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I mean, the Christians believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And choosing a date to celebrate his birth, yes, there are, there are questions and disputes about the 25th of December. And, and, and and, and I don't believe that. Uh, it, the, the, the most important thing is the reason. Okay. The reason. I, I'm not particular. I, I, I don't really uh, argue about the date. But the reason. If the reason is good, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't really make much uh, dif difference. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Can I respond? Yes. yes. Uh, Pastor, that wasn't my question. I appreciate the, 
the ex um, the expounding on something else. But uh, does do you? My question was, do you lead your congregation in the celebration of what yes, they I, call yes, Christmas? Yes, yes, I do. Okay, that's what I want. That's what I want to get on. Yes, I so do. if you do that, but you don't personally believe that Jesus was not born in that time period but you still lead the congregants into that your personal belief won't really translate into the it won't really transcend to the people that are listening they will in fact leave the church and actually think that jesus was born in that time frame they will think that this whole celebration and the whole history of of christmas is related to god that is wrong pastor that is wrong uh, the the next thing is is that um Concerning Jesus, Jesus came in the volume of the book. The, the high holy days that are recorded in the Bible, God and Jesus is about those, but God and Jesus are one. Um, Christmas was not ordained. The so-called Christmas holiday was not ordained by any of the prophets, was not ordained, was not ordained by any, any record in the Bible at all. So as a pastor or, or leader, myself, the rest of us, uh, our bishops, deacons, so forth, we are not to uh, bring out of this Bible even the assumption that it's okay to celebrate something that God clearly speaks against. And then the reason why I said God clearly speaks against because that is recorded in the Bible. Can we read that? Okay. Um, a lot of times we have to be careful in the words that we use. I also heard the pastor say that Jesus broke the Sabbath. And that suggests that that Jesus is about the breaking of God's laws. But right at the same time, he explained, because it's correct, what he explained about what Jesus said. He said the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So basically what he was saying, that he was about teaching our people how to keep the law. Okay? So it's not saying that we willfully break the law. So the reason why I had to say that is because a lot of uh, doctrines are circulating that the laws of God are not important. And this is another problem that we have. Uh, once we get on that train of thinking that the laws of God are not important, we will hear scriptures like what we're reading about keeping God's high holy days as opposed to the world's holidays. And we will think it's okay to, to break God's laws in terms of his holidays or his, his high holy days and keep these uh, customs of the heathen. We think it's okay because we'll get into a doctrine that, well, Jesus broke the law, so that means everybody could break the law. That's not what Christ meant by saying that. Um, you all right with that, Pastor? Yeah, I'm listening. I'm listening to you. Okay. I can't hear you, Harley. Isaac, your, your, Isaac, your, your mic needs to be turned up again. They turned you down. So while you're doing that, once again, I'd just like to remind the viewers to get uh, some more in-depth information concerning the origin or the history of Christmas. We have a video on YouTube under the channel of IUIC in the Classroom entitled The, the History of Christmas. Can you, you can hear me now, Deacon? view that. Yes, I can hear you. Wonderful. Wonderful. I was just taking advantage of the silence. No, that's, that's good. That's good. <laughs> That is good. Okay, um, I just wanted to know if the pastor has something to, to say to what you just said, because I believe that you expanded on some things, and um, mm -hmm. on, on you know Jesus, on us using Jesus' example to see if that is something we should, you know, okay. use in the church or not. You know, so pastor, do you have anything to say uh, about that one as well? Thank you, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I, I want to read a scripture okay. from Mark chapter two. Mm -hmm. I made mention of the Sabbath. I want to start from verse twenty-five. And he said unto them, uh, let me start from verse 24. And the Pharisees said unto him, Behold, why do they on the Sabbath day, which is not lawful? Verse 25. And he said unto them, Have ye never read what David did when he had need and was unhanged? He and they that were with him. How he went into the house of God in the days of Abiathar the high priest. And did eat the show bread which is not lawful to eat, but for the priest, and gave also to them which were with him, 
Verse 27, and he said unto them, The Sabbath was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. Traditionally, it was not right for Jesus to do what he did. Traditionally. Because on the, the Sabbath Pharisees day... The Pharisees tried to use that against them. That's the point. But, but Jesus that's actually... Saying, but, that's but, but, but what Jesus did, to especially most of the healings that Jesus did, he did them on the Sabbath. And uh, Jesus Christ, on one occasion in the gospel, spoke about their hypocrisy. And then he told them that when you have a sheep or a goat and one falls into a ditch, and it's exactly. on the Sabbath, you would definitely go and, and, and fetch that sheep out. How much more a human being that is created in the image of the Father. On one day, right. Jesus said that this woman who is bent over, is she not also a daughter of Abraham, whom the devil has bound these 18 years? And from what I read from the book of Mark chapter 2, you find out clearly that they had, you know, that was why the Pharisees had uh, some issues with Jesus. For example, when Jesus did what he did on that day, and, and they made mention of him breaking the Sabbath, he gave them an example of David in the Old Testament. And the Bible says that in the days of Abiathar the high priest, David went into the, the temple. The showbread was meant only for the high priest. David was not a priest. He was a king. He was an anointed king. But David and the men that were with him went and ate the showbread. And Jesus said, nothing happened to David. Normally, if an ordinary guy or an ordinary person should eat from the showbread, that person should die instantly. But David did and he was spared. And Jesus also is, is giving that example. Said that, that, that Jesus, he said in the verse 28 that, Therefore the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. When you read in Colossians, uh, uh, I've forgotten the exact chapter, Paul says something that, Let us not spoil people through the philosophies of men and the rudiment of this world. You see, in Christianity and with God, when you get to learn more about God, and especially in the Old Testament, God dealt in patterns. God dealt with people in patterns. For example, in the Old Testament, they were meant to sacrifice bulls and cows and all that. In the New Testament, when the fulfillment of, of the revelation of God was revealed in Christ Jesus, we, we no longer uh, uh, do animal sacrifice. For example, the Sabbath day. I think when I come back, I will read to you the reason why the Sabbath day was given. The Sabbath day was given, and it has a revelation behind it, for the coming of Christ. And in Hebrews chapter 2, chapter 3, Paul spoke about it. That when you come into Christ, you have entered into God's rest. So, 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 um, uh, the days, days and times, of course, God deals with days and times. He, when He made the sun and the moon, mm -hmm. He said the sun and the moon should control seasons and times. Yeah. But the reason for something happening within a day supersede mm -hmm. the date itself. Good. The, the, what I think, what I believe what the deacon was trying to say though was, uh, how is, uh, because you were, you explained that your belief is different from, you know, if, uh, you don't believe that Jesus was born exactly on December 25th. So how do you run the church through that festival or that celebration? That is where, you know, he brought in that scripture of Jesus. So that is where, you know, he wanted um, some kind of clearance, if I may say. That is that is correct. Just for a second. Uh, yeah. uh, Isaac, that is correct. That was my initial question. But when he said that Jesus broke the Sabbath, mm -hmm. I wanted to. And although he made points about David and the showbread, about the ox falling in the ditch, who would not get it, those, those things there, when somebody takes those examples and use them and say that Jesus broke the Sabbath, it gives a connotation that you can break God's law willingly. And that's what I was addressing. Uh, uh, what, what, uh, uh, Bishop, what is God's law? I, I didn't what, say that's what you okay. but I said I have to be careful. Oh, okay. well, one deacon, second. Deacon, deacon. I have to, oh, okay. I, I have to hold, wait, 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 Pastor. Yeah. I'm conscious on how people receive things because I too sat in church. I'm not, I'm not oblivious to what goes on in the church. Mm -hmm. I understand how when words are used in the church, the effect that it have on the congregants. Uh, I'm speaking on behalf of those who may not understand perhaps what you're saying you may be you may be saying the right thing maybe but it normally gets translated into we can break god's law because quote unquote jesus broke god's law and that's what my concern was about you understand pastor i do understand that okay so we've addressed that part of it now can i get to the other part of some of the things that you've said earlier you said a lot you made the point about why you cover why do you 
continue to uh, bring out or teach the congregants about Christmas. And you gave some examples. You said that you mentioned about the Roman Empire and you mentioned about Constantine and some other things that you said, and you were saying that it was about tradition. And because of that, it somewhat became morphed into our uh, religiosity, if you will, of the teaching of the Bible. Deacon, but if, I, the, if, the, if I may try yes. to, I just want to clarify this part, because um, you yes. mentioned that he continued to teach about Christmas. Is it continue to teach about Christmas or just continue to practice? Just allow the, 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 ce the celebration of Christmas to go on. Because I think there's a difference. I, I think there's a difference if they teach about Christmas or not. I just want a clarification on that part. Uh, you know, Bishop uh, uh, Deacon. Yeah, yeah, once again, is, is, yeah. I just want to yeah. clarify that part yeah. so he can continue. Okay. So, is it? Did you teach about Christmas, or do you just allow the celebration? We we, to go we on? teach about Christmas. Okay, teach about Christmas. Yeah. Good. Okay, then Deacon, go on. Okay, if we're going to teach about Christmas, the question is, who are we teaching? This and the other thing is, what are we teaching? Okay. Can I, can I, the can Israelites we, are supposed to be taught the laws of God. Deacon, can I ask a question, please? Certainly. De but I'd like to what, finish why, my statement. Wh okay, okay, okay. When you finish, yeah. Okay. Um, about who, who are we teaching and what are we teaching? If it's not in the Bible to, for us to even teach anything about Christmas, why are we doing it? Now, enough talk. I want to read out the Bible so that we can eliminate this fog that have seemed to enter into our discussion about whether Christmas is taught or whether it's allowed. Both of them are the same thing. Rather, rather the pastor would have answered and says, I don't teach it, but I allow it. It's still teaching because if you don't correct wrong, you, if you by your mere allowing it, you're still teaching. Jeremiah 10. All right. This is the book of Jeremiah chapter 10. And verse 1. Yes, sir. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. This is the prophet Jeremiah speaking to the Israelites that was about to go into Babylon. And he was aware of this custom that Babylon was keeping. Now, Babylon, the, the empire of Babylon was two empires away from the, from the empire of which Jesus was born, which was in Rome. So we're talking about Babylon, then after Babylon came Persia, then Greece. As a matter of fact, it was three uh, empires. You had Greece and then Rome. So during the Babylonian Empire, Jeremiah is, is admonishing or warning or instructing, better word, instructing Israel not to follow this particular custom and all these customs of the nations. Let's read it. Verse 2. Thus Read saith the Lord, the first verse. verse 1, Jeremiah 10, verse 1. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. So hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. So that's, that's the people who he's speaking to, the Israelites. We don't realize that we are the people whom this Bible is for because we don't know our nationality. Churches are supposed to be institutions of learning. We should not be sitting in a church, period, and learning about anything without first learning about who we are as a people. Who are we in reference to the Bible? The Bible has nations recorded in the Bible. Which one of the nations are us? Before you can tell us about Jesus, about the ox that went in a ditch, anything, you, we must be told and taught who are we in, in relation to God. That's the first thing. Read it again. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen. The, the word heathen means the nations. Learn, in other words, do not follow the ways and the customs of the nations. This was a direct uh, directive that was given to the Israelites to not do. Go ahead. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for, for the heathen are dismayed at them. For that's what the nations worry about. The signs of heaven is talking about what goes on in, with the stars and all that. Read. For the customs of the people are vain. This is the part I wanted to get to. For the customs of the nations and the people themselves are vain. For the customs of the people are vain. So this uh, list of verses here is going to outline one of the customs. That, we're, that we are to be 
taken as vain. Vain meaning of no value. We're not supposed to have any connection to it at all. We're not supposed to teach it, nor, the, nor are we supposed to even allow it as a preacher of the Lord. We're not supposed to allow this kind of uh, custom to be taught. We should not allow this kind of custom to even be allowed because that's a warning from God. Read, thir we read three again. For the customs of the people are vain. God says that these customs are vain. Listen to the custom that we're going to read about. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. For one, one of the customs, one of these holidays, one of their customs of the nations is that in one particular custom, they cut a tree out of a forest. Read that again. For one cutteth. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. Read. They deck it with silver and with gold. You cannot, there's no person on earth that has ever heard of Christmas that would read this and say, this is not talking about the Christmas tree. You yourself even agree with that, Pastor, don't you? I, I agree with you, and that is when you get to understand that people celebrate Christmas for different reasons. Some is, uh, I'm not getting to that yet. Some, uh, some explain it for economic that's reasons and cultural I'm... reasons. Um, so, okay, so, yeah, yeah. all that that has nothing to do with what I'm saying here. I don't. God is God is not concerned with the reason why they do it. God is only concerned about it being done or it not being done. God is concerned about the reason. The reason the reason why I rob somebody is not is not a good enough reason. It Go is, ahead, God read is, it God again. Is, God is it says, okay, Jeremiah ten verse four. They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. Now they use a tree stand. Go ahead. They are upright as the palm tree. That's the evergreen tree. Back then they really had a palm tree, and they used to put silver and gold on it. So that's the Christmas tree today. The Bible says for us not to celebrate this thing. So a lot of us know about this. A lot of us hear about this. And we will ignore this because we do not want to face the pressure, the pressure of our people in, re in rebellious wickedness. Mm -hmm. it, the, the preacher would not even have a job if he came into the church and taught, especially around this season here. If he went into the church and said, listen, we are not celebrating Christmas at all. Thus saith the Lord, the church will be closed down it's or they will true. suffer massive losses. I in don't funds. agree with you, Deacon. I don't agree with okay. you. Okay. So in that case, Pastor, after we read this, you should no longer give an answer as to say that you allow the people in the church Deacon, to teach about the scripture. Deacon, uh, when you base most of your argument on the Old Testament, you, you will, you will oh. lack the full revelation of God. Uh, so most of your most of your argument is coming from the Old Testament, and when you okay. give, uh, let me make a point here. I'm a when you make, to that statement. When you make most of your argument based on the Old Testament, you wouldn't get the full revelation of God. What Jeremiah was talking about was idol worshiping. In, on, idol worshiping is totally so wrong. This is not talking uh, uh, idol worshiping is totally wrong. Let me, Bishop, and your uh, Deacon, sorry, you made mention of where do we come from? Are we Jews? Are we? Israelites I'll get to that later. We are the Israelites that the Bible speaks of. We are, we are the spiritual Israelites. I believe that. No, we're not the spiritual Israelites. We are the bloodline descendants of Jacob's sons. You, uh, let, um, Deacon, we, God made Adam and Eve, right? We all are from one source. I want to read yes. a scripture from Genesis chapter 12 and differentiate something. Uh, you can take your Bible and let's check something from Genesis chapter 12. I'm reading from verse 1. And the Lord had said, now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. God called one man, Abraham and went into a covenant with him when you read from genesis chapter 12. can i interject and, i'm sorry pastor um, i'm sorry just for a second Deacon, I, yeah all right i'm i want to allow him to finish okay the time was before and god was god went Go into a pact with abraham and god said through you I, i'm going to bless the whole world now when you study about abraham he gave birth to isaac isaac gave birth to jacob and he's 
uh, Esau. Mm -hmm. And you remember the name Israel was given to Jacob when he had an encounter with the angel when he was yes. returning from Laban and he was afraid that Esau was going to kill him uh, and he had an encounter with an angel. The Bible says that he rested with that angel to the break of the day. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says that the angel said that from today, when he, he requested that his name be changed, the angel said, from today, you will no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, because as a prince, thou hast fought with God and hast prevailed. So that, that is the first time we come across the name Israel. And okay. those people beca became, you know, Jacob gave birth to 12 sons. You're saying that's the spirit, that's the reason why we're spiritual Israelites? Is that your point? Uh, uh, let, me, let, me, let me finish that. I don't want to get lost, that's where yeah, I'm asking. Let me finish that. Continue. And now, through those 12 sons, that's why we have the 12, the, the 12 tribes of Israel. Now, mm -hmm. through them, you see, God had already called one man out, Abraham. And then he said, with mm -hmm. you, I'm going to bless the whole world. And you can, we can very much agree with me that in the Bible, you made mention that we have different, let me say, nations or countries, Edom, Edom, and, and, and uh, most of them, some of, some of them came from Esau, the Edomites, they are from Esau. Okay? Now, God dealt with that nation through the seed. God said that through your seed, I will bless the whole world. So all the seed that came from Abraham, and that is why when you read the book of Matthew, when it was talking about the genealogy of Jesus Christ, it started all the way from that, and then it came up to the time of David, okay? Now, when Jesus came in the gospel, when the uh, Syrophoenician uh, woman wanted healing for her daughter, and Jesus made a statement and said, I have, not, I have not come to everybody, but I have come to the lost sheep of Israel. Mm -hmm. Now, through the dealings of God, that, I, I agree with you when you said that the Ten Commandments, the Old Testament, was purposely written for the Jews, yes. God was dealing with that nation at that point in time. All pointing to Christ. All pointing to Christ. I made mention of being a spiritual Israelite because uh, Paul made mention of that in the New Testament. I think I'll look for that scripture and then I'll read it. One, anybody that is born again who has received Jesus Christ into his life. When you read from the book of Romans chapter 10, when Paul was talking about um, uh, the Israelites, he said that they, had, they have a zeal for God but not according to knowledge. In the, in, the, in the book of Romans chapter 10. Can I read that? Yeah. Okay, let me read Romans chapter 10. So why you look for Romans chapter 10, I, you, okay. you mentioned that anyone who is born again yeah. is, uh, is an Israelite. It, it's, it's a spiritual Israelite. Mm. Because through one man, Abraham, you know, uh, 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 Abraham got married after Sarah died to mm. a lady, uh, forgotten the name, uh, um, uh, Abraham got married again uh -huh. to a lady after Sarah died. And according to, I mean, the study of scriptures, uh -huh. most we blacks came from that woman. Uh -huh. Okay, so and, and look at even the Muslims. They also came from Abraham through Ishmael. So that one man, Abraham, was the man that God called. All of us are connected to him. Mm -hmm. But in the initial advent of Christ, he came purposely for the Jews. And then after his death, that blessing that God promised Abraham reached the whole world through the Gentiles. When we say someone is a Gentile, all other nations that are not out of Israel, Gentile nations, we didn't know God. We didn't have a. We didn't have any connection with God. So, do you mean that um, we, as people that What's are not from Israel, are Gentiles as well? Once, of course, those of us that are not uh, physically mm -hmm. from that line mm. of, of of Israel, we are Gentiles. All other nations, apart from the Jews, are Gentiles. Referred to as Gentile nations. Okay, you have. Okay. You he have said a lot. I, yeah, yeah. I, I, he either has, he gets to the point, or I need to speak. Yeah, I understand. He, the last okay, I'm not trying to be belligerent. No, 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 I want no, to get. Fine. I want to understand this point. It's fine. I think he has the last scripture that he wants to read in Romans that is going to get us to the point where he mentions spiritual Israelites. That's the point he's trying to make, I believe. So, um, okay, you're at Romans. I, I think. I think Deacon. Uh, uh, Deacon can speak. Uh, I'm. I'm still searching for that. Oh, scripture. you're still searching for yeah. the scripture. Okay, Deacon. Deacon, Deacon, Deacon can speak. The floor is yours. Okay, the first. Mm -hmm. I, I'm smiling because in the back of my mind, I have to think about how Satan works. I'm, I don't want anybody to get offended. But my point of reading Jeremiah 10, it was written in the Old Testament, correct? 
So exactly. I got to take it point by point exactly. because a lot of things get lost as we start rambling and going through into other things and we forget the initial point. Yes. The point of me reading Jeremiah the 10th chapter was reading about a custom of Christmas, a, a custom that is called Christmas today. They didn't call it Christmas back then. He had mentioned earlier about Saturnalia, Brumalia, and the other things like that that are connected with it. Uh, well, even if you go back, it was about the uh, celebration of Tammuz, the little boy, all that. You can read about that in history. So they have re records on how what this holiday really means. But what they have done today, they have took it and put, quote, unquote, Christian values in it and used that to, to suck Israel into following after these wicked customs. I'll mention this here, then I'm going to mention something else about what went down in this uh, discourse. There's a book entitled Eternal Rome. Also, and there was a Latin dictionary that I had come across about 20 years ago. One of the old elders at the old school had it. And it spoke about how Rome, this, how Rome took uh, information about the holidays in the Bible and mixed them with pagan customs to subvert Israel to follow after these customs. An example, Christmas trees. What does a Christmas tree and some bulbs have to do with Jesus? Nothing. Mm. Mm. What does a bunny rabbit and eggs, and rabbits don't even lay eggs. What does that have to do with Jesus? But the, the mere fact that these uh, rulers have been, have successful has successfully been able to take these customs and lace, lace certain scriptural uh, references in it is exactly what our, a lot of our pastors do today. Case in point. I read out of the Old Testament and the response of the pastor was, I'm taking, I'm reading out of the Old Testament. So he's basically saying that the Old Testament is done away with. He said that the New Testament somewhat gets rid of the Old Testament. Therefore, I should be focusing on the New Testament. Although Christ said, lo, I come in the volume of the book. So that takes care of that. Another part of the New Testament, Jesus said, think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I'm come not to destroy, but to fulfill. Let's lay that to the side. After I've read this in Jeremiah, what did my friend do? He goes to Genesis and he reads. What did he read about Abraham? Through thee, through thy seed, shall all the all, nations, all be, nations blessed. be blessed. So all of a sudden, the Old Testament is good enough right. because he wants to take a part of that and use that to lace it in with Jesus and then try to say, oh, Jesus uh, is about not dealing with the Old Testament. That's slick, but that's okay. That's all right. I'm not here to make anybody angry intentionally. People get mad, they get mad, but I'm not trying to do it intentionally. Um now, give me, let's deal with what he said about the scripture in Acts. I mean, in um, Genesis. Genesis. This is the book of Acts, chapter 3. So what did it actually mean? Acts, chapter 3, and verse 25. Ye are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham. Hold it. Saying unto who? Unto Abraham. The scripture that my friend just quoted. Go ahead. And in thy seed, and in thy seed, listen, shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. So there's more, because let's find out what it means when it says in thy seed. Read. Unto you first God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. Turning away from, turning away from you all that is in iniquity. Iniquity means sin. In order for you to be even be able to commit sin, you had to have been given the law. Now let's go to the Old Testament, Psalms 147. This is what this was talking about. And the raising of Jesus, Jesus was the Savior to the nation of Israel. That's the reason why he was called the Lamb, because Israel had lambs to sacrifice. The other nations never had that. So what kind of sacrifice was Jesus to them? This is the confusion that goes on in the church. And church, it's, it's some of them know confusion. about Bishop, this. Bishop is not uh, a deacon. It's not a confusion. Uh -huh. It's never a confusion. But I'm telling you, people get confused no, when they don't hear it people. properly explained. You are rather confused. Let's read. People. Let's read. The book of Bible. Psalms, chapter 147, verse 19. He showeth his word unto Jacob. That's the Bible. God shows his word unto Jacob. Jacob is not the whole world. 
his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. His statutes and his judgments unto the Israelites. Go ahead. He hath not dealt so with any nation. God has not given his laws to any nation. That's what that means. Go ahead. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. God has not dealt with the other nations. So when Christ was put on the cross, he was put on the cross for a sacrifice for the nation of Israel because the nation of Israel had laws of sacrifice on the books. There was five sets of laws that was recorded for the Israelites. You had a civil law, you had a dietary law, you had a ceremonial law, you had a moral law, and you had a law on sacrificing. The laws of sacrifice are the laws that was done away with. So when you read in the New Testament about areas where it says that he had done away with the law and all that, that was only talking about the laws of sacrifice. Why? Because Jesus, the lamb, became the ultimate sacrifice. That's how that goes. Um, yeah. yeah. Let me see. There was Romans 9. Yeah, Romans 9. Oh, are, you, are, you, uh, Deacon, are you going through all his points? Yeah, I'm trying to. Okay. I'm trying to. I'm trying to go through all his points because he said a lot out there and I don't I don't like to leave anything unturned because people will be scratching their head. Well, what did he mean by that? He never cleared that up, that kind of thing. I, I try to remem remember everything that is said. Mm. Nine, three. Um, yes, about spiritual Israelites. That's what I want. The book of Romans, chapter 9 and verse 3. For I wish that myself... This is the Apostle Paul. Okay. Read. For I, for I could wish that myself were a curse from Christ for my brethren. For my brethren. Who was Paul? Paul was an Israelite of the tribe of Benjamin of the nation of Israel. Go ahead. My kinsmen. My kinsmen, meaning the people that are bloodline related to Paul. According to the flesh. According to the flesh, meaning that you have to be born in the nation that Paul is talking about. We're supposed to know from reading this that this is talking about the Israelites. But just in case we're still confused, he just comes out and tells you in flat English. Who are Israelites? Now he didn't name them for you. So now you can't add the, you can't add the Edomites. You can't add the Arabs. You can't add the so-called white man. You can't add nobody. You have to go by what the scriptures say. Read. To whom pertaineth the adoption. You see with that word whom there? Whom means belonging to. To whom belongeth the adoption. What is the adoption? Christ dying on the cross. The, the, the event of Christ's death being put on the cross was the event that adopted Israel back to the Most High. Why? Because Israel had broken the first covenant. So that covenant was based on sacrifice. The second covenant was based on Christ. The first covenant was based on sacrifice. The second covenant is based on Christ. Who, does they, who do they pertain to? The Israelites. This particular chapter tells you all of that. Give me Romans 9.13. Just get right to the point. Verse 13. As it is written... Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. If Esau is in the world today, is he not? Pastor, is Esau in the world today? Yes or no? I'm about to be done. True, true um, Esau. He's in the world today, correct? Of course, definitely. Thank you. That's all I need. Read it again. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. God says he hates Esau. Let's say we don't even know who he is. God says he hates him. So why, once why we have God, that uh, understanding... Can, can, can you explain why God hated Esau? I'm going to get to that in a minute. Okay. Let's line up the things that was laid out first. If we have this understanding here that God hates Esau, then the, the misunderstanding of John 3.16 has to be questioned. For God so loved the world, now you have to ask the question, what world was Christ talking about? Because it certainly, it certainly could have meant the whole planet Earth because Esau is on it. And God's tell you there, he's telling you through Paul in the New Testament that he hates Esau. So the world there is Israelites, like, it's, like it uh, confirms in the book of Isaiah 45, 17. Uh, Israel is a world without end. That's the world that Christ was talking about. And even if you read two verses above John 3, 16, it clears that up. Okay. Okay. Uh, Deacon, are you, pastor, are, you, are you? I'm I'm done. Yes. Great, great. For now, now um, pastor, you were you were talking about a part that is, is confusing uh, the script with the scriptures, or you were confusing with the scriptures. Can you d define? Can you elaborate on that? Um, part? I think uh, first of all, I want to ask Deacon. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Christmas is celebrated for many reasons. Um, some some celebrate Christmas for economic reasons because that is a time the 
uh, they are able to do business. Mm -hmm. Christ, uh, Christmas is celebrated by non Christians and Christians alike. Okay. Some celebrate it for cultural reasons, some celebrate it for family reasons. Mm -hmm. I think it was during uh, Charles Dickens who actually promoted that uh, Christmas should be used for the, uh, for the family, like mm -hmm. the coming back together of the family. Also. Mm -hmm. you know? So from, from the time, when you read most of Charles, Charles Dickens' books, you find out that he promoted uh, the coming together of the family during Christmas. Nonetheless, it doesn't change the fact that we celebrate the birth of Christ. Some may use it for different reasons. But the idea that, that Jesus is being celebrated is, is a laudable one. I want to read from Matthew chapter 2. Matthew chapter 2. I want to read something from there. Mm -hmm. Matthew chapter 2. I, I want to read from verse 1. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod, the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his light or his star in the east, and are come to worship him. When he okay, so when you read Matthew chapter, Matthew, Matthew chapter 2, uh -huh. you find out that when Jesus was born, these three wise men came to celebrate his birth. They were happy about it. Why? Because a king was born. A savior was born. So the idea is this. We, we do celebrate our birthdays to remember the day we came into this world. You want to speak so on what I want to say is that if Jesus Christ, his birth, I made mention earlier that the exact date for his birth is not known. Huh. We don't know it. The we'll Bible doesn't that. state it. But what is wrong when we celebrate the one we think is our savior? We take a day to celebrate his birth. What is wrong with that? Now, I, I, I made mention earlier that Jesus Christ asked us to actually celebrate two things in the church. Water baptism and then the Lord's Supper. He said, do this in remembrance of me. And in the book of Matthew chapter 28, he said, go and baptize on a, go and preach the gospel. Anyone that will, preach, will, will accept the gospel, baptize them in the name of the Father of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So these are the two in quotes, which was that the church is permitted by Christ to do the Lord's Supper, to remember his death, his burial, his resurrection, his ascension, and his glorification. The celebration of Christmas, to remember the birth of Jesus, if we believe that he's our Lord, he's our Savior, and we do believe that, and we take a day, and, and, and on, on that day, it's an opportunity for us to reach, you know, most of the time, when we celebrate Christmas in church, we tell the word about why Jesus came. Mm. We tell them why a Savior was given. That angel Gabriel visited Mary and said, this son that you are carrying in your womb is going to be the Savior of the whole world. So it's an opportunity for us to preach the gospel of Jesus. It's an opportunity for us to remind the world that there was once a time, like more than close to 2,000 years ago, that a Savior was born. So, so uh, uh, Deacon is, is right because some people celebrate it for the wrong reasons. They go to the gym. That is even when the day that people actually break their virginity. And that is when people actually do a whole lot of stuff. It, 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 is, as, it, is, it is there. Mm. But the idea that a Savior was born being celebrated it's never a bad idea. It's never a bad I think it's a laudable one. It's a laudable one. All right. Deacon? Yes. I think there, I are, some, uh, there are some agreements there. Uh, what, what, what would you say in, in to, that, to that conjunction uh, right there? Well, we have to, when we say, what, do you want to speak on the, what you were talking about first, and then I'll come in behind it? Sure, sure, sure. Hey, uh, how are you, Pastor? I'm, 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 this is well, Officer I'm Noah. So He's been yeah. quiet up to this point. I said, it, let him mm. get in a little bit. But I, I do want to deal with what you just said. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> yes, He's how you doing, son, Pastor? Right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's, a son so, of, He's a son of God. So one thing you yeah. said, Pastor, in the midst of your speech, was that uh, the purpose of Christ coming into the world. Um, and in the same chapter that you read, that you were quoting from, um, it tells you who and what purpose Christ came for. If we read the same chapter, chapter 2 and verse 6, but, but I'll read it. Do you accept that I'll they came it. to celebrate his birth? Do you accept that? 
that they came to celebrate his birth. His birth. When he was born, no, no. they came looking for him. So what did they come and do? They came to here. Here, go. Hold it. Hold it. This is where we have to be careful. I, I do want Noah to come in. This is so, what so, I mean because I, I want, I want to answer this question I, for me. They can. They can, can answer this question for me. Well, I got did you. You're about to celebrate, celebrate him, him or not? Can I expound? Can I please respond? Bishop, and no, I, yes. Thank you. Right. I'm going to let him speak, but I'm going to Bishop, address Bishop, that. Bishop, uh, Deacon, I would like you to continue on. Did they come to celebrate him or not? When I'm they came and they gave, they gave those gifts. I'm trying to answer what? your question. It wasn't about celebrating his it birthday. Was what? They were celebrating the event that a savior was there. Oh my goodness. And the reason why I had to come in, the reason why I had to come in, listen to me. No, no, no. They can, I'm hold trying on. to. They can, they can, they can, they can you just it, made a statement. They can hold it was not about uh, without, without respect, you said that they came to celebrate an event. That is what Christmas is the for. The event you, is you, you about just him that coming into. No, no, you, no, no. The reason why I'm the reason why I'm being oh, insistent in making my point oh, is because oh, what you're saying, the connotations behind what you're saying, goes to say that we should celebrate birthdays, and that is not what the Bible is talking about. Sure, if we're looking for a savior to come and save us, yes, we want him to come in. But when you turn it into a a birthday celebration, that is not what the scriptures are talking about. Everybody was born in the Bible. Didn't nobody talking about birthdays of, of other people? Why was it important about him? Because of what he was coming to do. It was not about celebrating his birthday. So if they did that, is it wrong for us so to do now, that? So now I'm going to say this here. You said is something it, it else too. To you made that? the point about, okay, uh, about like that it's one not person, recorded one, in the Bible. Yeah. It's not recorded in the Bible about his birth, uh, about the time period of his birth. It is recorded in there. But it has nothing to do with his quote unquote birthday. And I'm gonna talk about that uh okay. after my my brother Noah okay. uh expounds on what he had before Come on. before before Officer Noah expands, I I, yeah. I, I we're all very passionate right now. There's a lot of passion mm -hmm. in the discussion. Um, but I, I also, I, I'm allowing because I feel like some of you have some points that want to come across. And the only way to come across is when you guys have that, you know, um, just a little drag right there. That's why, because ev everyone is real passionate. I don't want to interrupt, but I'd like us to keep the respectful right. uh, boundaries situated. Right. I, will. Very important. I will. So we can all, and just, so when yeah, one talks, we so allow the other. I'm not giving thank time. So I'm not giving time measures today, but I feel like I, I kind of need to in right. a way. Um, but let's, let's let's go on. Let's go on. We're, we're right. doing good. Well, and just, be... just to clarify your point, uh, Isaac, and I do agree with what you're saying. The only reason why the passion comes out is just like I alluded earlier. I'm cognizant. I'm cognizant of how words go out, go out through the television airwaves and the effect that it has on our people. So if, if I catch that, that somebody may be misled by a, by a particular way that the word is delivered, I as a responsible person have to address it that's my that's where my passion comes in i i, I don't want to i don't want to say that the pastor is being decept being deceptive but if the information that's coming across the airwaves is going to lead to deception i'm going to speak about it Deacon, it's it's I, I feel the energy from both of y'all and it's it's absolutely fine. I just want us to just have this balance right there. Okay. okay. Um so officer uh Noah, yes, you may thank go you, on thank you very read. much. Yeah. So, so what well, I want to stay in Matthew chapter two to address the the pastor's uh, uh what what he's trying to state about the celebration of birth of Jesus. I'm gonna start at verse one, if you don't mind. He says, Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king. Now, Herod was ruling in Judea. As any ruling uh, uh, king, any king in rulership, when you hear about another king being born, of the people that you're ruling over, what happens to you? What, it, what happens in your mind? Wait, I'm going to be superseded. I'm going to be taken over. My rulership, my reign, my glory is no longer going to be in effect. So now let's see why Herod was looking for Christ. Let's go down to verse, uh, let's start at verse 3. He says, when Herod the king had heard these things, yes, sir, thank you very much. Uh, Matthew chapter 2 and verse 3. Yes. When Herod the king had heard these things, actually, you can start at verse 2, okay, saying, where is he that is born king of the Jews? So Herod is saying, where is this king of the Jews? Where is he? He's looking for him. Why? Read on. For we have seen his star in the east uh -huh. and are come to worship him. No, uh -huh. It, wasn't, That's, Herod. That, it, it wasn't Herod that made the second statement in verse 2. It was the wise men. It wasn't Herod it, that made that Read on, Deacon. 
when Herod the king had heard these things, uh -huh. he was troubled. He was what? He was troubled. Why was he troubled? Because his, if he knew that there was a king of the Jews of the people he's ruling over, then his kingdom will stop reigning. Read on. And all Jerusalem with him. Now, let's got, drop down to verse uh, 6 for me. Because the pastor also said something about uh, the purpose of Christ coming to the earth. Read on. And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art thou art not the least of among the princes of Judah? For out of thee shall come a governor uh -huh. that shall rule my people Israel. That shall rule what? Shall rule my people Israel. That governor is Jesus the Christ. He's going to rule his people Israel. Not all nations. His people. He's going to rule over his people. Now, let's, let's get some. Uh, let's you drop want, down to. You want verse 7? Yes, so read on. You what, yes, sir. This, Thank you very much. It says, Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. So now Herod says, listen, there's going to be a king that's going to rule over my people. It's making it clear. The scriptures are, are making it plain. Now he says, let me inquire privily uh, to these wise men to see where is this child going to be at. Now drop down to verse 13 for me. You want 12? Yes, Let's give me 12. First. Give me verse uh, 13. Okay. And when, they, and when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, uh -huh. Arise. And take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt. So now, why would the angel of the Lord appear to Joseph and tell him to flee with Mary and Christ? Why would he do that? Read on. Wait a minute. Uh, okay. Um, flee into Egypt and be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. So Herod was seeking Christ to kill him. To kill him, not to celebrate his birthday, but to destroy him. That's the reason why the scriptures are plainly telling you that Herod was looking to kill Christ. That's the only reason they say we saw the star in the east. Let, let's let's go. And, where's this child at? Let's go and find him and let's put let's put him to death because I don't want my rule to, to over the children of Israel to be finished. And just a second, just a second. Um, I, I kind of want when they have when then I will let you talk. Okay. So that there's no uh, talking on top of each other. Um, uh, officer, just finish your point so we can move on because we're gonna go in a break in three minutes from now. Yes. Yes. Okay. So now this is the big misconception with uh with the three wise men. They say mm -hmm. he they came to him when he was a baby. Read verse sixteen now. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wroth uh -huh. and sent forth and slew all of the children that were in Bethlehem and, and in all the coasts thereof from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. So Herod was looking for Christ for over two years. He was looking to kill the, the, the man who was going to rule over his his rulership, his kingdom over Judea. He was looking to seek to kill him, not to celebrate his birthday. So you, you got that? You, you got that, Pastor? You got that? Um, I made myself Isaac. the wise man, not Herod. The wise man came to celebrate Jesus. Of course, Herod was infuriated. The wise okay. man okay. came uh, and they uh, brought present to Jesus. The white, the, let me, the, the let me, let me came, expound on that part right there. Then we can go to break, the Isaac. Wise, you with me? The wise we'll man came quick. and brought a present to Jesus. And they were excited Can I about explain? his pet. Just a second, Deacon. I'm, 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 okay, I'm going to... Huh? The, what you say, Isaac? The, the wise sorry. men came to celebrate Jesus. Mm -hmm. Herod was, of course, infuriated. Herod wasn't happy that somebody they called the king of the Jews was born. But the wise men, when you read Matthew chapter 2, they came with gifts. They were happy. That's not the point. What is the point? Gonna, okay, the point is, is that we were not celebrating his birthday like we do celebrations out here today. That's not what the, we to, read it can, already. I wanted you to clarify. Did they, they come to celebrate his birth or what? I need you to listen for a minute, Pastor. I need you to listen. I've been listening to you all the time. You need to listen. Listen to listen to I, my I, point. I have been listening to you all the time. And when you have when you have an enemy in your land, and you're ruling over the people in your land. The people that's in the land need somebody to get the, get the oppressor off of them. 
That's what they were looking for. They weren't trying to celebrate no birthday per se. They were looking for a savior to get this evil person off of them. Herod, on the other end of, of the rulership, he's looking to kill our savior. We're looking for our savior to deliver us. This has nothing to do with a birthday per se, and this has absolutely nothing to do with Christmas. And I'm going to get back to that Christmas thing too. Yeah, but this is the reason why I say I this is the reason why I say that I have to listen attentively, attentively because right. I don't want the wrong thought to go out there. This is not about a celebration of birthdays. The gifts, yes, we're happy for the Savior to come. Yes, we're happy. We bring gifts and all that. Yes, we're happy because our deliverer is here. But this is not about so celebrating a birthday. Today too, today even in, happy even that he was born two thousand years ago, what is wrong with Listen that? to me. You, you're still trying to skew this into some I'm, I'm uh, not, I'm paganistic. Not to do that. No, don't use words to deceive people. Listen to what there. I'm saying. And that is because if you want to make the point about right now, thank you, thank you very much, Deacon. Thank you very much, Pastor. That is all we have time for at this segment. We're going to go for a break in about a minute, and then we will be back to continue the segment. And stay tuned guys and uh, leave your questions in so we can read them out in the next segment all right shalom this is bishop nathaniel of israel united in christ please subscribe to our youtube channels stay up to date with our latest events music and classroom lessons IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org